So we're drinking, we're, we're drinking a tea that I, I we're two steepings in, I started in there, we're, we're planning an event called Sobriety with my very dear friend uh, Jennifer, who I've known for many, many years. Old tea spot. Uh, old tea spot yeah. homie. Old Butters? Tea spot, yeah. Yeah, yeah, she's, yeah, yeah she's, but she was just in it, she's left in this yeah. by two seconds. Corvette? Yeah, nice. Probably, I think so. Uh, I think that's yeah. her boyfriend. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 Right on. Yeah. So we'll be doing that. That's, that's awesome. awesome. Yeah, no, I'm super excited about it. Because we're already so you know I mean? We're already not drinking alcohol here. And yeah. And doing stuff. So we might as well get people yeah, here. Nice. T and T, yeah. The high end life and T. That's the thing thing before I got here. Yeah. Oh, you did? I did. Oh. Yeah. Dang. Yeah, yeah, that's right. What we'll new you and Sean Tool soon? Oh, yeah. This is Unto Purity. This is a white, a wild white tea. And that's not our name for it. That's his name for it. Chirchun uh, Unto Purity. He's a very like, fancy literary dude. His name's Hungi. He is from Sichuan province in Ma Bien. Sichuan is this province here. This is where I live, is in Chengdu. Uh -huh. Ma Bien is, I think, like five hours like this way. I don't know exactly where it was. I remember it took five hours to get there uh -huh. on a bus. Um, and uh, it was fun. It was fun. Right? But a beautiful, beautiful place, very remote. And they have a lot of wild tea growing up in the mountains. And so it's Hungi he makes. This, uh, these are little balls, little dragon balls. Uh, to purity, it's inner sun, Wang Ya, uh, Crimson Spring, uh, Welcoming Spring, all of these um, you know, wild green and white red teas. And uh, yeah, I love this one. We've been taking this one to events a lot because there's these little balls. And you just have a single search for the ball. Mm -hmm. They're really good. So, so you said it's mountainous there. Is it arid or is it really moist or it's pretty moist. Is it? Yeah, it's pretty moist. It's like temperate. I wouldn't say it's temperate rainforest, but it's it's pretty moist. It's temperate and it's moist. It's misty. Mm. Mm. Yeah. It's it tends to like misty nights. Misty nights. Yeah. Misty so since this isn't like as much of like people who already work here, we have a few people who already work here, but but I was thinking we could go around and do like introductions. I know that we have our virtual name tags on sure. T6 sure. here, but for people who are here who don't necessarily know each other, we can do introductions. I'll start. I'm Sohan. I use the uh, pronouns he, him. I also use the gender neutral Chinese pronoun ta, which I've been saying for years and was just in that movie, and mm -hmm. I'm glad it was in that movie because not people know it. This is everything everywhere all at once. Um, the movie, everything everywhere which all at once. Which is super good. Yeah. Great advertisement. Great scene. Great great scene. Great scene. <laughs> Michelle Yeoh saying, like, this is so cumbersome in English. I have to learn he and she and they and, like, it's just ta in Chinese. Thanks. Mm. It's, just, it's, it's very good. I'm Eric. Um, I use I he, him, know. or they, them pronouns. Either one's fine. Um, and uh, I, okay, I work here with Sohan. Um, been making the show Going for Tea Chow with Sohan for like five years or six years now. It's, it's, it's that's, that's the game. Yeah, um, the, the main and line. now we're now we're making this new show, which it, it's just fun to have conversation with people. people. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks for joining everybody. I'm Corey, and I work as the operations director for the Modern Rogue uh, YouTube channel and all the other projects we do, a bunch of other YouTube channels and podcasts and TV shows and stuff, and so excited to be here. Mm -hmm. I'm Jen. Corey is my husband. <laughs> I'm not his wife, he's my husband. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, I, use, I don't even know, I've never had to explain my pronoun. So I use she, her, mm -hmm. and they, them, or her, what is it? I don't even know. Yeah, she, her, her, okay. they, them, yeah, yeah, um, so you have one? Yeah. yeah so, I don't know. Cool. I, I do watercolor art. Cool. cool. And I also stay at home with my baby. Mm. How old? Nine and a half. Nine and a half. Nice. <laughs> so I just started back into the workforce a little bit, but. Cool. Yeah. So, anyway, that's what I do. Wonderful. Well, I'm Iman. Um, he, him. Um, also, any pronouns, I may or may not respond. Um, <laughs> uh, I. Work somewhat at the tea house. Um, I help out with events here. A long time community member. Outside of the tea house, I'm a musician and um, creator of uh, many many channels. And yeah. What do you play? 
or I'm primarily a vocalist. So. Oh, nice. Yeah, that's that's my little spiel. Nice. Yeah. Oh. My TikTok is transforming. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yes, I just wiped it clean because oh, I'm dear. getting ready for a new frontier. Oh, nice. Whoa. That's exciting. Yes. Fresh TikTok. Uh -huh. Yeah. <laughs> Stay tuned. Okay. Yeah. I'm excited. I love TikTok. <laughs> I do too. <laughs> yeah. Uh, my name's Haley. Uh, my business job, I'm a project manager at Blue Apron, but I also do other. I don't know, I feel like my hobby's hobbies. I try to get into different stuff. Um, I have a food ASMR channel, and I'm also actually trying to teach myself watercolors right now. But I... I can give you lots of tips. <laughs> yeah, I would love that, because it's so confusing. Yeah. Oh, really? It's, like, counterintuitive to me. Mm. That, like, I'm used to working... Like, I think what it is is um, the translucency. It feels n more like light than pigment, and mm. so it feels different in my brain. Mm. Yeah, so I respect you because that's really hard. <laughs> that food ASMR channel is really good. Oh, okay. yeah, it's great. It's, uh, it's so fun. What's it called, by the way? Uh, Eat Every Sound. Oh, I've been I love sound. that. That's Eat awesome. Every Sound. Thanks. Lots of like squishing and cutting yeah. and popping of tabs and stuff, like opening. Yeah. Parts. But all, all with like food. So it's like squishing an orange. Mm. More, yeah. more like cutting into. Celery or Do you ever sweet open a potato? pomegranate and get the seeds out of your pomegranate? Not yet. That's 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 awesome. I should put that in my yeah. list. That'd be good. There's, there's, you know, there's, a, there's, a, there's also the, the squeaking of, of trying to open a jackfruit. Or the squeaking of mushrooms. Oh, uh, yeah, that's a good one. Yeah, I haven't done jackfruit though, so I'm going to write that down. That's a, you got a lot, I've got work cut out for you with jackfruit. There's a lot of, you got to wear gloves for that. Wear gloves, yeah. So is that on YouTube? Yeah, you, I, I update YouTube more frequently than Instagram. Instagram's still there if you want to like go back for the highlights, but... I think for ASMR, though, YouTube mm. is the way to go. Yeah. yeah. Like, yeah. Instagram is nice. I, I don't I don't consume Instagram with the sound on the Same. Yeah, I yeah. Really do. My name is Kaylee. I'm founder of Podcast Farm, where I help entrepreneurs, businesses, and organizations launch podcasts. Oh. And then I'm the host of the Amplify What You Love podcast, where I interview people I love about things that we all love. And I'm a music producer. Cool. Oh, sweet. Awesome. Um, it's a pleasure to be here with you all. Yeah. Yeah. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Yeah. Kaylee for a long time, too. Um, and we just, uh, Kaylee just interviewed me yesterday for uh, this podcast. That's awesome. That was cool. That was good. It was, fun. It was amazing having you, man. Yeah, I, yeah. It was, yesterday was a good day for like conversations. I had like a, a live stream on Instagram with um, uh, another team or actually somebody who lives in China and it was just a really good conversation. Cool. Yeah, I saw you go live. I was like, wow, you're, 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 you're batching. I, 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 I was apparently, yeah. I don't know if anyone's going to watch that one. It was, it was it's a very dry topic that would probably mostly concern people who are tea merchants, which is like, Phoenix Oolongs, how do you name them? Do you translate the name? Sometimes you can't translate the name. Do you use the Chinese, the pinyin? But the names aren't really in Mandarin. The names are really in Chao Zhou Hua. Like, like extreme, like the like the attic level of like nerdiness in tea. But also very vendor specific because you don't name. It's just not. It doesn't matter what you call them as much if you're not putting them on a website. Yeah. You know I mean? but, I'm gonna have to check this out. It's a really yeah. good discussion. Yeah. It, was, it was a good discussion. It ended up being like about white supremacy. Oh my god! Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But it's good. Check it out. It's really good. Seems really. like most things end up being about that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you talk about something long enough, you're like, but there's this thing going on that really affects this. Oh my god. On that subject, I had recently just watched a, a, a talk so I did with our pal Ray Liu. Oh, you watched I it? Did, uh, from Grass People Tree in London. Nice. Um, she's originally from Guizhou, and they had a conversation on YouTube a little while back about. Uh, cultural appropriation versus appreciation mm -hmm, and yeah. just like kind of dissecting that and how to how to know what you know what, what, which one's which and, and, and how to operate in a friendly manner mm -hmm. in this uh, space yeah. and that was a really good conversation really really well done um, both both Sohan and Ray were, were so you know well spoken about it and, and, and 
just calmly walk through the whole thing, which is really nice. There was a little bit of a Q and A. It was a good. Con it was a really good conversation. Ray's such a cool person. If y'all yeah, haven't checked her out and, and her tea thing that she's doing, she's really got a really cool thing going on. She's one of my favorite tea people in the in, in the world. Mm. Man, she should do ASMR stuff because her voice is so beautiful. It's and so soothing. pretty. She talks. She has like a Chinese British accent. Uh -huh. oh. And she's Whoa. like, and she was like a runway model for her whole life. Like she's wow. like this like very beautiful, like mysterious, like soft-spoken woman and she has this like, really beautiful soft voice. She talks really slowly and she just, yeah, she's, yeah, she'd be great at ASMR. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah, she's, her voice is so nice. And we just got in a bunch of tea that, it's not her tea, but she introduced us to the people that we got it from. Yeah. She goes to these so Yeah. I'm, I'm, I can't wait for her tea to come in, like, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, Master Lens tea. Yeah. Dang. She's got a tea that she calls Master's Green. It's so good. It's like a crazy green tea because it's like they'll leave it out on mats for like 40 days, which is totally not what you usually do for green tea. Yeah. But that tea master calls it green, calls it green tea, so it's green tea, and it's a. It's like an aged. It's it's like yeah, it's like a I don't know like it's it, it it's it's just a very unique green tea, uh, and it has a really juicy, bold flavor. It's it's cheese on it. Well, we've got some of Xiangga's tea in those yellow boxes, so if we want to make that a part of this event where we... Crack an open box Scott and was no, just say full idea. on. Yeah, um, Scott, Scott, would be Scott would be pissed. Yeah, Scott's on. Why, then he wasn't here? Our, he's our inventory <laughs> man. Uh, like, yeah, the box <laughs> is now I got mean, this box. all labeled and yeah, like, yeah. in the system. That said, I'm down to do it. I will apologize on behalf of the event. That would be a legit T system. Can we facilitate a collaboration to make this very ASMR and oh. also um, T affiliated where we like using the best box cutter and the best <laughs> microphone oh, and just yeah, yeah. <laughs> 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 We'll see how we feel in like uh, an hour. Yeah, we'll, we'll get through some conversations. The, 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 that's, I mean, we can open it right here and we yeah. have a box cutter. That's yeah. true. We got it. Yeah, that's All those layers of tape. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that'd be great. Be great. Yeah. Have you done unboxings yet? On the show? Uh, not on, on like the Instagram. On Instagram Live. We've done a lot. It's extremely tedious because um, <laughs> all of tea wear is wrapped so well. Usually we're unboxing tea wear because tea leaves are a lot less interesting to mm. look at. Although they probably people want to see that. Bings would be cool. Honestly, like, people want to see giant bags of tea because yeah. normal consumers don't see that. Yeah, they're yeah. Really like, oh, and it, like tea. even just side by side the different kinds. Yeah, you're right. It's There's so, it's like that kind of satisfying of like dipping your hand into like a whole mm -hmm. bowl of nuts or something <gasps> or like yes. marbles. Like you ever dip your hand into a whole bowl of marbles? Like it's rice. Like, when uh, you get the like any, twenty pound bags. I was thinking can be like tactile mm -hmm. and very yeah. stimulating. Yeah. yeah. And uh, satisfying. Oh my god. Don't underestimate underestimate people's um, just fascination with like mundane things. Oh, yeah. Behind the scenes yeah. stuff, yeah. 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 Honestly that's like like I was I've been telling Corey this like since we did modern rogue stuff, I was like, I really just wanna do more YouTube stuff. Like I just wanna spend more of my time doing because like everything we do is really interesting here. Like, everything yeah. that happens in the TS is like really interesting and compelling. Uh, maybe not the taxes, that was more Yeah, taxes is not that. All afternoon, all day I doing taxes. I was having a conversation with a dude from Hyper Real Film Club the other day, or this was last night, just about like the whole journey of like building a, a community organization and like all the ups and downs that go along with that and wanting to like take care of people while also like dealing with funding and things and, and how to like build this thing from scratch when you don't have like just an angel investor or like upfront capital. So that'd be a cool conversation to have sometime on you. Yeah and it's hard too I can imagine with community stuff that getting people's trust to actually let them help you. Mm -hmm. I would think that would be a big part of it. Like you know people... I mean a lot of people are really, really willing to help. The the trouble comes when it's like, you know, six months down the line of help and mm -hmm. like if, if, if it's like, is it going somewhere? Is that help turning into something else? Or is it just like a thing? That they want to see You know, progress. where, yeah, people, people want to feel like the growth of the community with their personal growth in the community. And so 
if if that community if that personal growth happens to be timing out with a period of like community stagnate or really company like stagnation or like maybe we hit a, a slow month or something you know then it can be pretty difficult you know just kind of trying to keep the energy yeah. up, you know, and, and and also like not um, you know not exploit people or like try to be real with everybody about what's going on and, and things like yeah. that so but volunteer efforts are you know we've always had some some amount of volunteer presence and uh, people are always kind of just like throwing their hat in the ring to just add, like from coming in and drinking tea with people, but just be like, oh, I had such a good time. What can I do? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, and you know, historically, it's like the, the enthusiasm has outpaced our capacity to organize human effort. Yes, which is like, a, you know, as anyone who's ever managed people knows, that's like a whole own thing. Yeah. Organizing human effort. I mean, but we're getting a lot better at it now. Yeah, you know, now yeah. like we're 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 actually getting much more effective at it. That's just been a lot of like behind the scenes, like meetings and meetings and meetings and meetings, and like scrum boards, scrum yeah. boards. Using <laughs> <Somebody's> using <laughs> Monday. I feel like I'm having PTSD. <laughs> <right now. laughs> There's just the scrum yeah. boards. It's worse than taxes. <laughs> in retrospect, it's fun. You know, like in retrospect, it's cool. Like looking back on how we used to handle things, anything from like ordering new tea. To like, you know, how are we gonna get this, this, and this task done by three months from now? And now it's just a way different thing with different, you know, delegated tasks. That was its own journey. Was like so for so long. So long did everything. At the I was packing the boxes. So long did everything. Like every damn day. Yeah. And, and like and the there were so many bottlenecks that we had to work through. Well, it's like all right, we gotta we gotta train these people to be able to like take in the tea, you know, label it, get it into our system, do this thing. We we had to come up with systems for okay, well, like how much can we, uh, what kind of new teaware should we get? How should we decorate the front room? You know, and like all these things just had to get delegated to different people or, we, or it was never going to get done. When you own a business, that's like the chronic. Every, oh, yeah. I think every business owner deals with that. Because mm -hmm. totally. totally. it's you for so long, just yeah. you. Yeah. And then when you get help, you like you don't know how to delegate exactly. and trust these people yeah. to do it the way you do it. Exactly. And, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. and the, 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 what they don't tell you is that like you can't just delegate. You have to have systems documented and built out yeah. That, are yes. effect, that, that someone can step in there and be effective at it. Because if they're not effective at it, then it looks like they're failing at their job, but really you feel it at right. managing that. You know, yeah. Yeah. And, and making the role prepared for them to do, and then everyone's yes. shitty. Right, and it's like, there's that whole that whole bit of like, there's, you know, obviously there's like one-on-one, -on -one, like in-person training, but then there's also like a level where you know, the trainer might not be available at that given time. And so we need documentation that just says, here's a step-by-step -step process, here's what you gotta do. If I can't be available to be there to walk you through how we do wholesale tea, you know, or whatever, then, you know, then, then here's how you do it. Here's how you manage an email thread with a potential wholesale, you know, and, and record a video on Zoom. Like, here, we're gonna walk through all of our systems that we use, here's how you track it. That's been my job for the last two years, basically, is uh, Brian, the guy who kind of started Modern Rogue and all the other stuff that we do, he's controlled it forever, mm -hmm. you know, like basically 100%, because it was literally out of his house that we that everything started. Mm -hmm. And so now we've got like 10, 11 employees or whatever and multiple huge projects. Right. So it's been me over the last couple of years of just just taking everything out of his hands as much as possible and trying yeah. to spread it out to the team. That's like what Nate does here, mm. you know, because uh, like, that's like, you know, it's so interesting, you don't think about it when you're starting a business, you think like, this is about the thing the business is about, but the thing the business is about is that tiny little percent of what makes the business successful. It's the most important part, probably, mm -hmm. but without everything, it's like, I always say it's like the engine. An engine's great, but if it's not attached to a car, it's not going anywhere. <laughs> like, yeah. You have to have like a drive shaft, wheels. And, like wheels, mm -hmm. and you know a chassis and axles, yeah, like spark yeah. plugs, and you know all the you know stuff that actually makes a car run. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
I was watching all these Harvard and Stanford YouTube, you know, there's so much open university courseware out there now, which is really fantastic. So I've been trying to tune into more business stuff from the universities and they were talking about the core, the core value that a business offers. Like everything has to be built, which you were just saying, it's like everything has to be built off that, but then you get into so many other aspects that have to be well planned out because everything cuts into the margin everything changes the quality of the product or the satisfaction of the customer. And so there's, I actually took a screenshot. It's like this, this map of these different sectors of the business and and it's out, it's like laid out in a certain specific order so that you can visually see kind of how the business should function. And it's for any business, like it's a template that can, can go, but it's, it's interesting because even though we think it's, you know, it's just, this is just business. It's not personal. It's like we're all humans with, Emotions and trying needs. to run and needs mm-hmm. trying to run. Yeah. The, the well, and I think that's like a really big, t- like to me, that's kind of at the forefront of the business world right now. Is this kind of transition point mm-hmm. from you can be like, oh, this business, it's not personal, to like everyone's a human, and we actually do have to treat people like humans at work, and and. Uh, more and more people are kind of demanding that regardless of what their profession is you know like uh, I think we all got a big breather during the pandemic uh, especially with the work from home stuff and people getting laid off for a certain amount of the year and whatnot Um, and it seems a lot of folks are coming back with you know new ideas about what what it means to go to work and how how it shouldn't take up their whole lives you know it should support their lives and I think to me that now becomes a marker of good business, is how well is that business taking yeah. care of its people. It's been a know? long time coming. Yeah. yeah. Like, I, I feel like that's so palpable, especially in a place like this where you're having people come in and socialize. I feel like it's so palpable. The person sitting here pouring, if they're supported and empowered in their position and empowered in their life to do whatever they're trying to do with their life, then they come to the tea table and be totally present with whoever's here, with a completely wide variety of people. And that's absolutely essential for whoever's here. And it becomes less about tea. Yeah, exactly. You know, more about personal connection and other things, yeah. Yeah, that's one of the things with trying with my art to sell my art and thinking like, okay, right now it's just, I just do it for free. But if I wanted to sell it, there's a lot of business classes that, that basically challenge you to what's the, okay, you're creating something, but what's the need it's filling? Right. And what are you actually trying to sell people or give to people or whatever? And what kind of person are you trying to connect with? That's and so it's like, oh, shit. That's so important that's as an That's so artist. fucking hard. <laughs> I'm like, I don't know. I'm just creating art, you know? But it, it really, I feel like it can really help take your art whether it's music or watercolor, to the next level when you're more connected with who you're trying to sell to or give to or benefit or whatever. It's really really interesting. To me, it's like not an instinctive way to think, so I I appreciate it. And it's it's not to the end of creating art. It's to the end of making art a sustainable career. Yeah, exactly. There are two different ends. Yes, yeah, Hmm. yeah. And I think you can, I mean, there's space for both. Like, if you just want to purely do art and have it as a hobby, like, that's amazing. It's beautiful. Um, but but if art you're trying as a to business is a different bi- answer. Yeah, you have to learn a new muscle. Mm-hmm. And, and you have to be willing to play things that maybe you other people want to hear that you don't want to play. Right. I have to be willing to paint things that maybe yeah. I'm not so super interested in, but I know other people want to buy. <laughs> I haven't met that yet, but, but I would say I would say right now it's like large things. I say right now it's like eight by tens. Because right now I'm more like a five by seven kind of gal. So what about like the uh, men's birthday cards? Yeah, those are always hard. Men's cards are so hard. But I do for for men's stuff. I do a lot of wilderness things. I do a lot of fish. Tall ships. So yes, I yeah. do a lot of uh, seashores. You yeah, know, a yeah, lot yeah. of kind of eagles. Um, yeah, yeah, like not not <laughs> many floral things, not many rainbow things. You know, just kind Stacks. of like, yeah, <laughs> that would be a good one. <laughs> like, what's male coded? Yeah. <laughs> I thought of cowboy boot, boots. Cowboy. Yeah, cowboy boots. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Maybe like yeah, an yeah, yeah. open prairie. Yeah. <laughs> For whatever yeah, reason, like, I thought of the character adventure from the Page Master. 
just like that that adventure book guy who's just like oh, he's a big low deck Yeah, um, but, yeah. Oh, I yeah, like I the texture, the paint in that movie. It's so weird. It's so it's such an interesting movie. Page yeah. Master, it's, yeah, it's like uh, yes, it's Macaulay Culkin and Christopher Lloyd's in it as like the the wizard page master guy who's the librarian. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, Whoopi Goldberg's in library and libraries and librarians. Yeah. I, I, I mean, that's that's very um, on brand. <laughs> libraries and librarians. We did an episode with Macaulay. Uh, oh, yeah? Had a couple of them. Cool. So weird. Yeah. Yeah. Did y'all talk about Pizza Underground at all? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You got to. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, but one of them was like blood splatter. So, uh-huh. we're like a, a blood splatter scene, can you tell? Uh, what actually happened at a, at a murder scene or whatever? Uh huh. It's wild. Oh, oh yeah. I was wild. I'm going to go watch that one. Yeah. It's yeah. Really yeah. Another one we did was uh, hydrogen balloons. So, we'll a bunch of hydrogen balloons. He's what always so different to me. Yeah. Like, seeing him in Righteous Gemstones, I'm like, is that him? I couldn't even tell. Like, looking at him in that, in that one episode, I was like, is that him? Mm-hmm. No, it's not. Is it? He's always so different. Macaulay Culkin, when I see him, he's a, he's either like really skinny and looks yeah. strange, or he looks normal, or I don't know, it's just weird. Talk about a modern rogue with that Home Alone <laughs> trap setting. So. Oh, yeah. 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 Got some moves. Mm-hmm. That's funny. Oh, yeah. These are so good. I'm really just sometimes the, it's like you, you're drinking exactly the right tea for that particular moment for you, and sometimes you're drinking the right tea for that moment for everybody. Mm-hmm. And sometimes you're drinking tea that's good, and but, but sometimes you're drinking the tea that's exactly the right tea for that moment. I think this one, that's this one for mm-hmm. me right now. And I think is it's like it's like when I know when it's working because I feel like thirsty for that particular tea when I'm drinking it. I feel like my thirst is being quenched. Or mm-hmm. One thing that I noticed sometimes that happened earlier, what's happening a little bit now is like the texture in my mouth will change or like just the air in my mouth when I'm just hanging out and existing, yeah. like will smell good. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The lingering taste in your mouth is called the huaygan, the returning sweetness. And like you can probably feel it. This tea, mm-hmm. though it has a light flavor, has a really strong huaygan and it lingers for a long yeah. time. And when you're not drinking it, you can feel just almost like a resonant kind of like film almost over the inside of your mouth. Tongue, your tongue incense. What was that? <laughs> the tongue incense. <laughs> tongue incense. Yeah. 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 Uh, <laughs> yeah. But yeah, this one's this There's one's a pun in there somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're pun free tonight. No okay. <laughs> there needs to be like a neon sign. No puns, please. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> The Gon's also a good way to like let other tea houses know you know what you're talking about like right away. Oh, you know, there you go. You tell like another tea house like oh, yeah. the Gon's really good. They'll be like, oh, yeah. you like this tea. Yeah. 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 Cool. dog whistle. I feel like <laughs> I feel like in retrospect, I feel like that's the kind of thing that the boys were like wanting me to talk about more mm-hmm. yeah. when we were like, what kind of gatekeeping? insider oh. information can I know about this so but I was that like, I, like them. yeah I was, but I was like I wasn't quite getting it at the time now that I know them better and I've seen more of the show I'm like they, they wanted some like passwords like that like, yeah oh my God. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. but, but it, you know, so many people come to me and are like so do you have the McGriddle <laughs> you have the McGriddle to Zane because there's a scene in the uh, there's part of the episode where it was Jason, right? Jason was yeah. like, because I was explaining herbal teas and tisanes versus actual teas. So I'm like, anything that's not tea from the tea plant is a tisane. And Jason's like, so if I were to take him a griddle and pour boiling water on it, that's a tisane. I'm like, yep. Wow. <laughs> there you have it. Amazing. I can kind of imagine that. <laughs> It'd be a really greasy. Yeah. It would have a film of grease on it. Definitely. And it wouldn't taste good. No. I don't want to him a griddle. McChop? Um, <laughs> McGriddle has like a sweet, it's like, isn't it like a waffle? So this, it's, the bread is two waffles, so it's sweet. And then I think you just have a sausage. And then if you get, I guess, maybe a McGriddle with cheese. Or I, think I, think just I think it's like blueberry. I think it's like blueberry. No, it's really. Yeah. Is there an egg in it? 
Uh, no, honestly, it yeah. sounds like if it was if it was made of real food, it would probably be good. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. The concept yeah. is solid. Yeah, I like probably redo would it at home. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. no, <laughs> Yeah, if you were to do it down with food, that would be great. So you could make it to Zane, like, out of your gym sock. Yeah, that would be a Zane. That would be a Zane. Now we're getting into the world of, like, perfume making. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But, yeah. Yeah, someone was asking, what tea is the best for sleep? They asked on the story I posted. And I was like, well, actually, I guess according to what I just learned, there's not a tea that would be good for sleep. Is that true or not? Not necessarily. So all tea has caffeine, but tea also has other chemicals in it, and some of those do help you calm down. They're not like narcotic per se. Like but relax. They, they do relax yeah. you, and there are teas that I will drink if I'm trying to calm down and sleep. That even though they have caffeine, the, the, the effect of them calming me down is more than the effect of the caffeine. And those are hay cha. Uh, so like fermented teas besides puar that aren't puar. Technically, fermented puar is also hay cha, but we don't call it that. Just like you don't call, champagne is technically sparkling wine, but when you say sparkling wine, you mean not champagne. Right. So if you say hay cha, you mean not puar, even though puar, when it's fermented, is technically type of hay cha. So hay cha means black tea, but it's not what we think of as black tea. It means all of the fermented teas collectively from all over China, and I guess anywhere else, would be called hay cha. And the ones that aren't puar, especially the ones from Hunan, are more like sleepy, chill, like it's like that, I remember the first time that I had a bunch of them in a row, I was in Chenzhou, I was in Hunan, and the power was out in this guy's like mm -hmm. tea shop, and it was like really warm and kind of muggy out, mm -hmm. and we were drinking this hay cha, and the power was out, so he had to boil the water on like a stove in the kitchen, and it took a really long time, because he was in this big old kettle, and we were just sitting there, and it was like, like the, it was like dark inside, it was like really bright outside, and we were just drinking hay cha, like all this food, food one and stuff. And I was like, I was like, I was like, you know, like when you're in class or something, you're doing mm -hmm. it. Was like, yeah. I was like doing that. That's yeah. me at like 2 o'clock every day. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's like what time it was. And we were just drinking tea for hours and hours. And still, like a good food one, especially food one or shiliang cha, makes me like sleepy. Yeah, it's a uh, yeah. It's really different for each person's bodies, but like different teas just have different cheese, and some cheese are more like calming. Yeah. Some get me going. I you like know? hate chop first thing in the morning. No, like, yeah. it gets me fired up. Interesting. Yeah, I'm very weird with teas. <laughs> I'll usually do aged white tea if I'm trying to go to aged sleep, white. like really old aged white tea, like a, I have a 2012 Chomet at home, and like I'll drink that if I'm trying to have yeah. tea, but also go to bed. Um, funny enough, Yabao, which is a tea that we have that doesn't have caffeine in it, it's an offshoot mm -hmm. species of, of tea called Camellia crassicolumna, doesn't have caffeine, keeps me up. Really? Yeah, you wouldn't believe it. Amazing. It keeps me up. I was going to say... It's just um, the tea of that tea, keeps me up. Dang, <laughs> because that's the tea I would recommend for going to sleep. I literally had that last night before I went to bed, the raw Yabao, but yeah. I did mix it with... Um, the butterfly pea. Oh, nice. So, oh, that was good. The butterfly pea is like neutral. Yeah, yeah it's, it's very neutral. Neutral. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 Just goes to show, it's not a one size fit all thing. Yeah. It's kind of each person's different thing. All right, it's funny because now I look back on that. Like I used to, I used to be so such a cavalier, mm. young twenty something in the tea world. Like, ah, tea doesn't keep you up. It's fine. Yeah. And I would just like give people like thunderstruck before going to bed. I'm very <laughs> Just like go at it. I'm yeah. like, I'm 24. I don't understand how bodies work yet. I can just <laughs> stay up all night and not give a crap, you know? Um, now, now I'm a little bit more like conservative with, with when people are like, I'm sensitive to the thing. Can you suggest this thing? Yeah. Yeah, this is the only caffeine I have. Probably the last four or five years. Oh, wow. Oh, that's right. Yeah. I forgot that. Cool. Yeah. Yeah, I was. Go ahead. I was going to say, I will say, I uh, would not recommend red tea before bed. Um, no, no, no home chat. No, 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 no. Yeah. <laughs> Especially not the gamma morning. ring. That's... I had red tara this morning. It really got me going. I had a moment where I was like running back and forth in my house oh, yeah. just to like run off some steam. <laughs> I'm just like, no. I was like, Annie was looking at me all funny. I was like, this is how I feel right now. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> it's like punching stuff energy. Not out of anger, oh. but just out of like, just like the sheer like exuberance of punching something. I love it's, it's that. It's like feeling. DDR energy. It's like, yeah. You know, like, yeah. Yeah. You're, you're a little bit aggressive. A little bit aggressive. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes if I want to make myself feel that way, I'll jump. 
just yeah. like jump up and down and then eventually like I start giggling and then it kind of feels very similar to like wanting to punch stuff because I'm so yeah. excited and everything's funny that's great that's yeah. like yeah it's like how people tell you like you if you know if you're feeling kind of down just smiling will actually like start getting mm-hmm. getting you feeling like that's what's going on a lot of that's like the um, qigong and tai chi and inner inner qigong like the inner smile is one thing but then shaking is really powerful mm-hmm. energetic work yeah. and, and or like mm-hmm. kind of rising up on your tippy toes and then slamming down on your heels like oh. do, doing this like shake release thing is yeah. really good it settles the chi mm-hmm. it also moves it yeah yeah and it also it moves, moves the length totally which is really good for you I've, I've never learned, learned like formal qigong or tai chi or anything like that but um I really enjoy, like, at home doing dances that, for, you know, without knowledge of how it works, just trying to feel, like, every cell in my body. Yeah, well, are you trying to make that green too, or what? We can make that green. We we, we should (laughs) take the new one. I'll go grab the box. Um, Yeah, let's do it. Um, Also, I need a a shui. I can grab it, though. It's it's fine. What's that? I'm gonna grab a shui while you're grabbing. I got you. Grab that. I'm already over here. Grab, grab some of them boxes because I don't know which one it's in. There's, there's four of them boxes. Um, okay. But let's try one at a time. We'll It'll find be entertaining. Out. Mystery be box. Yeah. Yeah. I love opening boxes. That's where you give the v- the viewers the choice. You pull the, the if it was yeah. live, like which box do we open? Which box? Even when I know it's in it. I'm <laughs> yeah. I legit don't know. I mean, I know in a general sense that we got these things, but I kind of forgot exactly what we got because we ordered them a while oh, ago. Oh yeah. And it's a lot of different things, and it's so like it's fun opening the boxes here for me because I'm one of the only people who knows what they are because they're all labeled in Chinese, and Cindy is the other person who can read Chinese and like knows what they are. But like, <laughs> it makes me feel really important. <laughs> they're just like asked no out. Like, yeah. Like, yeah. 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 Like no no luck if you don't know what it is. Are me. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, you gotta teach Job people security, Chinese baby. is part of the training now. Yeah. Teach your Chinese, you said? Yeah. Well, did, well, they, was, um, did they make it in a good amount of time? That your boxes? They're all right. Yeah. They're all right. Yeah. Not not ridiculous. we we it's been it's been fine. It's been it's not like twenty twenty style or even twenty twenty one style anymore. It's uh, a lot more reasonable. We've got some some nice little leafy leaves here. Yeah, those are pretty. Nice little wild leafy. Is there any like interesting use for the oh. tea leaves afterwards that that you know about? I know about? of one. Uh, my mom told me this recently, and she's a big. She's got a huge green thumb, and she's got like a thousand orchids like hanging from her ceiling in her house. You're talking about these boxes that say "Don't open without Scott present," right? Yeah, those are. <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, sorry, Scott. <laughs> Maybe he can. Really? It says it on the <laughs> <set. laughs> Sorry, Scott. Oh. <laughs> can you bring the Sharpie so we can say, sorry, Scott. Oh, my God. <laughs> um, oh. But, Green yeah, orchids love the tannins mm. in tea. And so if you were to, like, make a tea with the leftover leaves and dilute it and then, like, give it to the orchids, they'd be really happy. Oh, wow. Oh. I wonder if, like, drying it and blending it and, like, crunching it up and turning it into, like, a, so- a dry... Yeah. Work too. Maybe. They're pretty sensitive to nutrients, like they don't they get burned if they get too right. many. But it might work, especially if they were kind of spent like this. Yeah. But yeah. Yeah, you might have to have some okay. experimental we'll orchids to see yeah. yeah. and, and so many different varieties of orchids nice. probably wouldn't, you know. Sorry, yeah, that looks Scott. tasty. Well, yeah. <laughs> it looks like food. It looks like seaweed. Of, yeah. This would be something from like the office, like when Michael would go down to the the um, warehouse and they're like Michael stop messing with the equipment <laughs> I just can't help himself yo this is going to be the first green tea of 2022 that we're drinking oh, yeah. 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 so yeah. super excited momentous alright what do we got this looks like this looks like we got some stuff we get hanging stone tea? Yeah. Oh, that's for this uh, is couch man. Oh, this is the this is the floating stone for uh yeah, like, for me guy. Me man. Yeah. Sean. 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 Right. Sean. Sean. Sean gets this box. Got me. Me and take it up like we never even did it. Oh, me. Me. That's made, cool. Me oh. the tea. Wow. That's cool. I think that's our number two or three. 
Yeah, it's the most views episode it's going to be. Oh, really? Our, it's in the top five anyways. Really? Yeah. We should do an episode of him making TV. Yeah. 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 Let's do that. He's got a new place called, I think it's called Garden of Eden. Yeah. Oh. yeah. <laughs> I love this. Is that in Austin? Yep. It is. Yep. It's up on Metric Boulevard. He's got a oh. bunch of tea and making a bunch of tea meat. Alright, what we got here? Alright, oh, here we go. Okay, this is, good stuff. Uh, this is here. This is Wulong Wulong. Uh, this is a Phoenix at Wulong. Okay, so this, this is, is our Ben Yao yeah, box, I guess. So, neither of these are the green and teas. This is our Lin Yao Bin of tea. Should we just take these back up? We should probably just take them back up, yeah. Yeah, it's not we can do now. that. Oh, yeah. you can unsorry the box. Yeah. 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 I already wrote sorry, Scott. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we did open them. Yeah. We did already violate the, the directive on the box, so we can still be sorry about it, but hopefully you can yeah, just kind of sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, not sorry. <laughs> <laughs> that, you know, no one recorded this or anything. Yeah, thank God. Yeah. He'll never know. There's no evidence. I mean, he's not going to watch this. I don't think. <laughs> he will. You think so? Scott's going to watch TCG. I bet you will. He'll come watch after, after he's already inventory. Oh, this right, will be the right, highlight right, of yeah. the episode. There you go. Dun, 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 dun. Wait, it's mine. Yeah, it's my crappy peasant's knife. Can I move my You can. If you wish. This is not proper knife knifemanship here. There we go. Alright. Oh, Looks like we got some longs. Longs. And right. we, we went for every box. Three, three. There, it says three out of four, four on this three. box, so that means it's got to be in the last one. Everything. I guess. Unless it's underneath these. Maybe, maybe this is a different order. I feel like, like Hungy's tea like should be here if we've got the... Some of them. If we've got the... Yeah, Ben ones, we place them at the same time. Yeah. Right? They ought to be. They ought to be. Isn't that always the way it goes? Yes. <laughs> the last, last box one. that we possibly mm -hmm. Works out with Russian roulette though, right? <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. I heard a run yeah, I'm so fascinated by the idea that people actually play Russian roulette. Yeah, what's like, the what's the gambit? Do you is winning just not dying? Winning is not dying. Yeah, it's like, it has to be, like, sadistic or something. Like, what's the drive? It was betting. Yeah, is oh, there so money? Oh, so gambling? Yeah. I mean, I guess you could have all of someone's money if they help themselves, <laughs> you know. Well, no, it was, it was, a lot of it was gambling that, so let's say you were doing it, and we would all bet, I think you're going to die, do you think you're going to win, so we'd all place bets on. Oh, so it's die. just the one. And so if you live, then you get part of it. Yeah. And so yes, you would get part of the, the, the proceeds. Yeah. Wow. Amazing. Yeah, so it was a gambling thing, from what I understand. This is like the second time this week that Russian roulette's come up really? in the room that I was in. Yeah, is it floating around? Do you, I often hear things in twos, like if it's uh, like something that wasn't introduced the previous week, like yeah. oh, and it's a new piece of information, let's say a word or just the theme. Like, I'll most certainly hear it again that next week, or, like, later on in that week. It's yeah. Like, it you never felt... Like, like, like if it's a word, or if it's an activity, or whatever, like, let's say something like paddleball, for example. Like, maybe I've never... Like, the weeks prior to that, like, I never thought about paddleball. I never even heard of the sport. I will... Probably hear it two days later, or a couple of days later, someone will be talking about it, or I'll just see it. I don't know. It just happens. It's been happening in my entire life. It's called the bottom mind lock complex. Uh, okay. Really? When you, yeah. When you, when you hear about something that you've never heard before, and then as soon as you do, you're thinking about it all the time. It's called the bottom mind lock complex. I guess I don't have any. It kind of reminds me of this thing um, Foucault talked about. Like he described it as like the drill, and it was kind of oh, all the possible yeah. ideas in any given moment. Mm -hmm. And so, like, when we this move through time, time like, this imaginary this rectangle also okay. moves through time and kind of maps out that everything that people are And then that makes me think that we just, like, we got it to the spot yeah. where, like, now people are talking about mm -hmm. paddleball. And, like, now it's in the realm of ideas. This feels very metaphysical. I like it. <laughs> yeah, that is metaphysical. And then I guess I need a child. I met a baby. Oh, yeah, some particle waves, baby. 
All right, we have the first fresh green tea of 2022. This is this is Tai Cha Mao Feng. It is from Shichuan in Guizhou. Where's that? Uh huh. Uh -huh. Good question. Thanks for asking. That. Yeah. Here's China. Yep. Here's Guizhou, and Shichuan is like here. Okay. So I've been there. It's really What's how the is this like? related to Su Mao Feng? I mean, um, besides it being green tea, how is it related? It is, it is an early spring buddy, like having lots of buds, mm -hmm. pick of a local cultivar, or not even a cultivar, this is Tai Cha. So this is, a cultivar is when you take a mother plant and you clone it and it's all the same genome. This Tai Cha is just like the subspecies of tea plants that live in Shichuan, Guizhou, and they have certain defining characteristics. And they've got old, old, old trees in Guizhou and Shichuan that are of this local race of tea plants that they would so call land race. It's not a specific clone cultivar. It's just the heirloom plants that grow in this region and have distinctive attributes because they're from this place. And they just through genetic drift and selection and the founder effect, you have this you distinct breed, you That's know, cool. and Tai Cha is one of those, it means moss tea, even though it doesn't mean to do with moss, that's just what it's called, and and um, nice it's, it turns purple in the late, late spring, early summer, it starts to turn purple um, uh, as, it, as it gets warmer, I think, uh, and, um, and they traditionally make something called Guan Guan Cha out of it, which is like a very coarse, very like, kind of like primitive style of tea. And you can see it looks like Mao Feng, it looks like Su Mao Feng. It's, it's the same idea as Su Mao Feng, which is from, uh, from Lomang Mountain in Sichuan. Um, so it's the same grade. So this is, this is making a, like a modern style of tea, which is this very fine Mao Feng out of this old plant that is usually subjected to this like, very primitive style, making it this Guan Guan Cha. We should have one one shot in this box. I think too. it should be in that box, yeah. If this yeah. is in there, yeah. it probably also is. Yeah, we'll start with this mouth on. Yeah. And yeah, so these are these basically wild tea plants. Um, and they're this unique breed that's just from Guizhou, it's just from Shichuan. Guizhou is this pretty remote province. The tea from there is not necessarily famous, but it's really good. It's becoming famous now. But it's it's remote and it's surrounded by other tea producing regions and so it gets Whoa. missed out all the time. Nice. You know? Yeah, I'm really excited about this. And this is made by That's a guy exciting. named Xiangge, uh, and he is an ethnic Miao. He's from the Miao ethnicity. Ch Xiangge, you said? Xiangge. Xiangge. Yeah. Thank you, Xiangge. Xiangge. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's great. He's awesome. He's 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 had the first organic certified organic tea farm in Guizhou. Oh, wow. And I know him because of our friend Ray of Rask People Tree. So anyone watching this, especially if you're in Europe or the UK, which is where they're based, go check out Rask People Tree. Even if you're not, um, go check out Rask People Tree. We've got his teas and we've got a lot of other great teas in the show. Certified organic. Uh, is it different in China versus here? Or is it the same thing? Is it the same thing? Certainly. Regulations? Certainly. I have no idea how they differ. Yeah. Um, the organic label is not nearly as popular in China as it is here, I think because of, uh, it's changing now, but when I lived there, like a lot of our tea farmers grow their tea organically, they don't have organic certification because they're selling tea to the people who knew their parents, like they're these people's parents knew their parents, and they, people, these are people who have been to their farm, and they know how they grow their yeah, it's like buying from a farmer's market. Right. There's a certain amount of trust. Exactly. And there's not a ton of faith in the organic label, you know. Um, and so there's not as much. But now it's changing. Now you are starting to see people in China seeking out organic certified stuff more. And there's a little bit, I think there's a lot more faith in the organic label because they have been a lot more strict about it. But Guizhou, they're very strict about um, even stuff that isn't organic certified, you're not, there's like a lot of, you're not allowed to bring pesticides into the region, you're not allowed to grow oh, wow. pesticides. Uh, and they've got these like signs everywhere that like, you will be fine. If you get caught possessing pesticides in this region, then you'll be fine. Um, but no so, uh, Guizhou, I'm actually really impressed with Guizhou as uh, like the, the Guizhou provincial government seems to be doing a lot to protect the environment uh, and to 
uh, prioritize, because a lot of these famous tea regions, when they get famous, the environment gets destroyed because people start flocking there to like cash mm -hmm. in on this like trend of this now famous tea and grow this tea, even though they have nothing to do with the region, nothing to do with the tea, it's not just, their heritage or their culture. But they're just like, oh, Da Hong Pao is famous, Tia Guan Yin is famous, I'm going to go start growing this, I'm going to go invest there, I'm going to buy land there, I'm going to start raising plants, I'm going to set up a little you know, tea thing and capitalize on the fame of this thing. And I'm going to terrace the field, terrace the hillside, I'm going to you know, cut down all the native forests and the trees, I'm going to plant rows and rows and rows of tea. And um, that's not good for the environment. So I think Guizhou is doing a pretty good job of, of promoting the growth of the tea industry, but really emphasizing the cleanness of the environment mm -hmm. over this high yield. They're putting a lot of regulations in place that are preventing people from just going there and just like setting up shop. Yeah, we actually just lost one of our favorite Guizhou teas for a year, at least a year, because they were taking a year off from harvesting to let the plants like kind of Regenerate. just take a break. They might make it. They might yeah. make it. Okay, smell that nice. But all of last year they didn't they didn't harvest it. So it was like we took a year off. You're I'm super on road side. Oh, because oh, I haven't had this in a long time. I didn't we didn't get this last year. We did not. We didn't get that mouth on last year. Yeah. We got one one shot, but we did not get that touch on mouth on your I was talking to Dan yesterday about like so if you wanna say you have like Napolitano style pizza or whatever you have to have this like guy from Italy and like certify your pizza and on the one hand that seems really silly getting like an official pizza but it also like protects things official like that pizza. because if you like if they're able yeah, to yeah that's like the champagne yeah the exactly yeah and <laughs> there's actually just a thing where um, the term Gruyere like doesn't mean anything anymore mm -hmm. like they were able to prove that in a court of law and so now if you go by Gruyere cheese like it's could be anything? Like yeah, it could be anything in wow. America. Wow. Yeah. It's a meatloaf. Gruyere. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. And so I feel like regulations like that, like, will ultimately end up, like, bringing prestige. Oh, that's why they're doing it. Yeah. Because they want Guizhou tea to mean quality. Mm, they yeah. want to be, yeah. they want people to know that if it's from Guizhou and it's really from Guizhou and it's certified as being from Guizhou, then that means that it's going to be good. It's smart. They're very smart. Yeah. They're doing a great job. I'm actually, and I, maybe I've got like stars in my eyes about it, but I, I've seen lots of despoiled tea regions. I've been to them. You know what I mean? I know what it looks like when a tea, local tea market gets out of hand and the tea production gets out of hand, and it's the worst possible thing for tea because these are special places where you can make these special teas, and they're the places that suffer because of the fame of the tea. And it could take generations for these places to recover, assuming they actually have the political will to try to help them recover. Nah, but, nah, but. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is that what you want from me? I think that's probably Texas winemaking now. <laughs> I don't know much about wine. I, I've, I've tried to like wine, and it never, it's never like clicked for me. Um, I'll have to take you out there. I'll yeah. Take you. Yeah, you know what? I'm down to try it. I've got a very open mind about it. Um, I've had people who like, know about wine, like, give me wines that they, they, they like that are good. Only to know the second glass is a lot better than the first. Okay. Uh, <laughs> you know, a friend of mine served me a Beaujolais Nouveau the other day out of a teacup, and I liked it. Yeah. Oh. And I was like, maybe it's because it was in a teacup. Mm -hmm. My brain was like, it's weird tea, but it's really all right. <laughs> it is weird. Like, when I was younger, I used to drink, because, you know, in, in Italy, they drink uh, wine out of the, they have just those little cups, yeah. they're not really wine glasses, they just look like little juice glasses, mm -hmm. and so when I was younger I used to drink wine out of stuff like that, thinking like, oh, I'm, you know, being more European, but now I can't, if I, dr if I don't drink it out of a wine glass, it just doesn't taste the same, mm -hmm. I'm like, oh, I don't feel like I'm really drinking wine, <laughs> I don't know what it is. It makes a huge difference, like, look, some of these cups on the shelf, these, like, some of these little cups are like 40, 50, 60 bucks. We've got, we've sold cups that are like 75, 100 bucks for just like a little cup. But it makes a big difference, the cup that you're drinking, it makes a huge difference. Oh, okay, good. Well, I'm big on the taste of the wine, the smell, so it makes a radical difference on the shape Yeah, what kind of cup is in You know, it's, it's, it's funny, because, like, I do like and get, like, the taste of beer. Like, I actually really, like, enjoy beer, and I, and I, I 
I've wanted to like be able to appreciate mine, and I can appreciate it from afar. Like the, I get that it's complex, the artisan, yeah. and it has lots of these notes. Like I can smell and taste these different complexities, and I've just never enjoyed. <laughs> what about whiskeys? I do have whiskey. That's maybe it's like the quantity. Like you have to get through so much wine and so much beer, but. With tea, with whiskey, it's like you don't have to have that much. Mm -hmm. I, 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 well, the thing is, like, I do like beer, and I will drink like a whole bottle or a whole can of beer or like a whole pint of beer. Not so much anymore because it makes me feel bad, but I enjoy the act of drinking it. I enjoy. And the taste. I mean? The yeah. taste, yeah. Like I, enjoy, I really like beer. I like the bubbles. I like the bitterness. I like the, the coldness. You know all those things, and um, like all of the you know hoppy notes. I like hoppy beers and everything, but I don't like the way they make feel so hard to ever drink them. And whiskey, I, I do really like whiskey. I really like the taste of uh, whiskey. But it also makes me sleepy as hell. Mm -hmm. Yeah, unfortunately. And hot. It makes me hot. And hot, yeah. And My just face like, like... Yeah, mm -hmm. and like slow, just like slow. Yeah. Do, you, do, you more, do you do any more episodes with the whiskey tribe out there? Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Or chat with you or something? Yeah, well, we did one, we did one um, a couple weeks ago that was really good. It was just a really fun episode. Mm -hmm. I had a great time filming it with them. It was about whiskey at different temperatures. Mm -hmm. so we're the so. <clears throat> it was fun, and, like, I enjoyed it, and I definitely was, like, a little bit drunk after doing it because mm -hmm. we did drink a lot of different whiskeys. Um, but, you know, I made it through the day. I didn't have to take a nap, so. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, it's fun. I mean, it's so, it's such a, a deep overlap in what draws people to whiskey and what draws people to tea. Yeah. Because um, there's so much complexity. Say, and wine. Yeah. <coughs> yeah, I'll have to let me know how many people come in, you know, from the whiskey tribe, because that's a pretty, uh, pretty active. A lot of people, a lot of people come in from whiskey tribe. Yeah, we're going to whiskey tribe people. Yeah, we've got some people commenting <coughs> on the YouTube channel as well. Yeah. I was telling them I'd love to do like a, a thing for Dry Week because they, you know, they do Dry Week mm -hmm. and like mm -hmm. a perfect opportunity to yeah. educate people about tea, get people into tea because it is such a deep level. What do you guys think of this tea, by the way? Easy. So good. Yeah, very good. I'm excited for the fifth board. Yeah. <laughs> Do you feel like you have a good sense of like where tea is going when you drink the course? <coughs> I am getting there. Yes. Mm. That's cool. Corey's got a pretty decent, you guys have a pretty decent tea collection at this point. Yeah. And they've definitely had lots of teas. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. Well then, just with all my, all my many years of wine tastings and yeah. whiskey tastings and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, he likes to do the smell, like yeah. the, you I, know, tra I track it well. Like yeah. by the time he actually is drinking it, I'm already finished. Yeah. He's, he's been smelling it the whole time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I like that too. Man, I'm really, really enjoying this one. I love green tea so much, and I haven't had it in months because we stopped buying it at the end of the year. You know, and this is like for me. I don't know. Oh, that it's like a seasonal thing. It's really best right after the harvest. Okay. Like right, right now. You can drink it through the year. You know, you could buy a bag of this tea and then still be drinking it a year from today, but it'll be not as good a yeah. year from today. It'll still be drinkable. It's not going to hurt you, and it definitely will still be enjoyable. You'd want to use much cooler water. You know, you're going to have to mm -hmm. modify the way that you steep it as it gets water. You're going to want to use cooler water. But I'd love to hear from you guys. Like, what do you, what do, what do you, what do you get from this tea? You know, what are your notes, or, or what do you, what do you, how, do, how do you feel when you drink it? Like, <clears throat> it's got a slight bitterness to it that I want to enjoy. I must catch a little savory. Yeah. Yeah, there's like a salty, savory, kind yeah. of like brothy quality to it that's Broth. really, really nice. And I like the, I'm really a fan of the viscosity of this tea. Yeah. It does feel quite like full bodied as opposed to like thin or yes. like watery. It feels like a categorically different liquid than water, um, regular water. So that's kind of nice. I always like when a tea does that. Um, and then, yeah, from a cheap perspective, I mean, we're, I, that was only my second, I think, that I had, but. Yeah, already it's it's got this kind of like uplifting yeah. smiley vibe, you That's know, what I was gonna say. which I'm about, you know. <laughs> I, it, it's kind of like the a similar like it's a very springy tea right for right now too. Like I, it feels kind of like the way I've been feeling seeing the leaves come out on the trees. It's like oh, nice. You guys are leafing out. That's good. Yeah. And that's what this is. This is the new growth. Of this that's what it is. And I'm here for it. That's what yeah. I'm saying. Yeah. <laughs> 
I like your buds, and I'm here for it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I really enjoy, uh, especially with my online communities, like um, like showing them the the, the progress of of the plants in my area. Uh -huh. Like I was I was really a fan with like some folks I'm on Discords with of like showing them pictures of the red buds oh, blooming. Yeah. Oh, it's like, yeah. all right, That's cool. spring's coming. Mm -hmm. Red buds are here. Yeah. That means the mountain laurels are going to be here. Yeah. That oh, means then yeah. soon, soon we're going to get some jasmine. In like a month or two, we're going to get some jasmine. It'll be great. I pressed some mountain laurel, and it like still smells good. Mm. That like great mm. pet flavor. Yeah. 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 <laughs> what do you guys What do you guys smell or taste or feel? There's a lingering umami note. Energetically, I also agree with Eric. It's 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 staying upwards. It's yeah. lifting. Feels like a gentle wave, um, just in my head area. It's quite nice. Yeah, I no definitely noticed the, I guess like the thick, you know, the, the viscosity of it. Just like, whoa, this. To me, I was like, this is kind of heavier for a green tea. You know, mm -hmm. like more potent, I guess. Yeah. It's thick. Yeah. <laughs> it's louder than the white tea we were drinking. I know we were halfway mm -hmm. through that. You know, you had brought that from the other room, but still, the the flavor is just a lot more vibrant and like hello. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Different. Yeah, I was getting kind of in a in a little bit of a like calm lull, and this was a bit uplifting. Yeah. Absolutely. We definitely get the, the the uplifting, like very very like euphoric uplifting, and I really felt. Uh, in my limbs, like mm. the first the first cup, I really felt the, like the sensation of just like coming down into my limbs. It was this very like uplifting feeling, um, and it's kind of like it's it's like thick and like rich, but also light and like almost like fluffy at the same time. Mm -hmm. It reminds me of like a, like a Krispy Kreme donut. You know, how Krispy <laughs> Kreme donuts are they're like rich, but they're not dense like other donuts. Yeah. They're like, light and like chewy and Fluffy. But you get a whole mouthful, and it's yeah. thick. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and it's thick, and it's thick, and it's chewy. But it's yeah, but it's like yeah. light and, mm -hmm. and soft. Mm -hmm. There was a period where I was just aligned with Krispy Kreme, and every time I got off work, like their sign was lit, oh, and they were ready. <laughs> and I even worked at a bakery, but I would stop at Krispy Kreme and get like a twelve pack nice. every night for like a week or two. Ooh. Yeah, Sometimes and then we're just get donuts. Yeah, yeah, yeah that that's great. Krispy Kreme. Hot donuts are like fentanyl. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the degree of like addictive and abuse potential of hot, fresh glazed donuts is like, I I, I, I have developed over the past maybe like four or five years a sugar addiction, and I never had that before. Oh really? When I was a kid, I would have my my Halloween candy would just be in the closet for like the whole year. I didn't eat it. I didn't care about like sugar. I still like. You candy. didn't go through a cereal phase. No, I never ate cereal. Congratulations. So what got you on the? I don't know. Just life gets yeah. to you. You know, <laughs> life wears you down, and, and yeah, it's the worst. It's You're like blank in your mid thirties with a sugar addiction. You know, <laughs> it's the worst. It is literally the most addictive. Like I've smoked cigarettes. Not as addictive. Yeah. Not as addictive. Life is hard. Simple <laughs> carbs. <laughs> It is. It's the hardest thing to put. Yeah, and it just like the society throws it at you. Yes. Mm -hmm. Throws it at you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Everywhere. I remember when I was a kid. Like, if I got salt and pepper kettle chips, it was salt and pepper. But now they put sugar in them. Yeah. Really? Wow. Yeah, and the kettle burned. Oh. Yeah. yeah, it's a real bummer. It doesn't. But the sugar the makes it more addictive. Mm -hmm. yeah. That sweet, salty yeah, thing totally. is a winning formula. Yeah. It still tastes good, but it's not the same. And also, yeah, I don't always want sugar in every single thing that I eat. Like, it's straight up with sugar. Like, sugar. Yeah. 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 You can't put Coke in it anymore. <laughs> <laughs> there's, a, there's a good book called uh, uh, Salt, Sugar, Fat. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and they basically talk about the food industry and how they shifted to now everything. They try to get this magic ratio of salt, sugar, fat, so everything has that magic ratio. Yeah. Some things we just shouldn't do the science on. You know? Yeah. Like, maybe, maybe we shouldn't know that magic number. Or like, yeah. no, it's a curse. Don't apply number. it. Don't don't <laughs> live in a society where you incentivize killing people yeah. with various things because it's a it's good for business. Yeah.
capitalism. Yeah. say, isn't that capitalism? Well, that's yeah. 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 the whole deal. Yeah. It's got some drawbacks. Fire yeah. everywhere. I feel like we should you just know. have like a flag. <laughs> Conversation's doing that thing again. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> sort of wanton disregard for human dignity and our society demonstrating now. And, and who's making money from it? Oh, this guy. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah. yeah, I think the biggest thing for me is that, you know, there, there, we have a responsibility to ourselves, right? So, yes, there's a lot of fault on them, but we also have a responsibility to ourselves. But it's when we become pawns when we don't know. Yeah. And then because they lie to us, yes. and the institutions that are yes. supposed to be protecting us don't. Yes, and they're getting you know they're feeding it to us and not telling us what's in it or whatever you know, and then and then it's too late, and then we can't make our own choices because you're addicted. Yeah. Oh, I mean, yeah. they start kids. Yes. So sad. not just candy, but like soda, even oh, juice, processed food yeah. in general. Yeah, you juice, know, like yeah. every damn thing. Yogurt, cereal, like yeah, every damn thing. I, Apple sauce. Oh, gosh, it is so frustrating um, working in schools and seeing the amount of sugar that they're introduced to. And the kids don't know any better. That's what they want. That, like, it, well, when it, we moved here, uh, that she has the option to get an ice cream in the lunch line. What? Like, every what? day? Yeah, every, every day. day. Strawberry yeah. milk. Yeah. And I'm thinking, milk. like, why Everything. is that there? I thank God they don't have vending machines in the school. I'm surprised. They, they did at mine. At El- and I was drinking but like, sun-kissed orange drink all the damn time. <laughs> yep. And that's like, you know, like, a can of Coke is like, has as much sugar as like two and a half Cadbury eggs. Oh, think geez. about how gross eating one Cadbury egg <laughs> is and how much sugar is in that. Because, like, when it's dissolved in liquid, you have to put so much more sugar in before you can taste it at all. Yeah. Like, think about putting sugar in iced tea or, or, uh-huh. or even yeah. sweet tea and trying to get it to taste sweet. Mm-hmm. You have to dump some sugar in there. But it's mm-hmm. What's the one that, that one book, it's, it did an apple? Like, how many grams of sugar? There's the same amount of grams of sugar in an apple as a, a soda. A bunch, but um, while we get fat, what to do about it? It's in that mm-hmm. one. But it was shocking, you know? Yeah. Like, even, even just fruit. Fructose is yeah. still sugar. Yeah, it's the, the, the cream catcher. Yeah. Well, they do some dirty tricks now as well. As they'll take, they'll take uh, like if you you'll see a pack of uh, some sort of fruit snacks for kids, and you know, it'll say made with natural sugar. But what they'll do is they'll take grapes, they will remove everything, process it down to just the juice, yeah. and they'll chemically alter it, uh, affect it, and then they will dry it out where it's nothing but the fructose left. Right. Literally just the fructose, nothing else. It did originate then, in a grape at some point. Yeah, and then they'll, they'll put it on the food and be like, made with natural sugar. Or like, yeah, I mean, Or 100% made with 100% juice. Yeah, uh, it's like technically, yeah. but also... Uh, capital yeah. juice. Yeah. 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 <laughs> That's why I need pumpkin. Capital juice. Capital juice. <laughs> it ain't my fault. <laughs> Sugar is so interesting. Okay, so when you make caramel, there's like over 200 different new compounds that get created. And like, we don't actually even know how many because we tried counting it once and then like stopped counting because there were too many. I'm tired. Yeah. Um, Because also, like, yeah, it was kind of just a passion thing. There wasn't like big money behind it. But one thing that they found though is that. At different levels of caramelization, it has different impacts on, like, your uh, glycemic index. And so if you just had sugar and then you, like, piled it on a baking sheet and baked it for, like, 10 minutes and let it toast, then it won't cause your blood sugar to spike as much. And it'll taste, like, pretty much like normal sugar, maybe a little bit different, but, like, 10 minutes isn't that long. And so, like, it's it's so complicated. And you so, so are you things. talking, though... The difference of like, you know, like it won't spike your insulin just a little. Like, is it even a, that measurable of a difference? That I don't really know. Yeah. I'd have to look into that more. Yeah. 
I'd be curious. I yeah. love caramel, though. <laughs> I know. <laughs> yeah, and even, like, because my daughter was wanting caramel sauce, and so she was wanting to buy, like, all these mm-hmm. smuckers or whatever. I'm like, no, That's we can true. make caramel. It's yeah. super easy. We can just make it. So we never got around to doing it, but then one day I was craving a sundae, and I was like, hmm, I'm just going to make some chocolate sauce. And to think about it, it was like, and I'd never made it before, but it was cocoa, sugar, and maybe water or vanilla or something. It was so easy. And it tasted awesome. And I'm thinking, we, we just buy stuff. And it has, yeah. think about all the other stuff that's in right. whatever we buy. Classic. Yeah, or gar gum or whatever, you know, red dye 40 or whatever. And it was just so easy. I was, I was like...